السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے ویل ڈسکس اباؤٹ ڈسپلنس آف بوٹنی اینڈ ڈفرینٹ فارمس آف پلانٹس ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دس لیکچر اسٹوڈنٹس ویل ایبل ٹو ایکسپلین ڈسپلنس آف بوٹنی اینڈ ڈفرینٹ فارمس اینڈ یوزز آف پلانٹس سو بوٹنی از اے برانچ آف بیولوجی وچ ڈیلس ود دی اسٹڈی آف پلانٹس اینڈ سم آف یو می آسک وائی شوڈ وی بی ریکوائرڈ ٹو لرن botany or plant sciences uh, because uh, plants occupy a very prominent position in our everyday lives where we depend upon plants for particularly all our food clothing medicine and shelter uh, it is the green plant and uh, that keep the air we breathe supplied with oxygen the absence of which will mean the extension of all life on earth So, botany is one of the oldest science begin with early human efforts to identify edible, uh, medicinal and poisonous plants. Botanists actually examine both internal and external function and processes within plants, organelles, cells, tissue, whole plants, plant population and plant communities. Okay, and the plant world is extremely diverse. arranging from one cell algae to a huge oak tree it contains a plant like mushrooms which have no green color in our gardens we find lichens and mosses so what is lichen it is actually the symbiotic partnership of two separate organisms a fungus and an algae which are green plants but have no true roots no leaves and no flowers Many of us grow ferns in our gardens so they are green plants with true leaves and roots but no flowers remember finally there are flowering or seed bearing plants which make up the vast majority of plants on earth plant science field is very broad field uh, there are so many aspects of plants to study and scientists in botany focus on either specific plant groups or plant processes plant researcher learn about conventional large scale farming organic agriculture uh, so what is organic agriculture it is actually the principal method of organic farming includes crop uh, rotation green manures biological pest control mechanical cultivation uh, which is actually another a uh, weed control method Uh, which undercuts weed between crop rows a uh, new sustainable uh, production practices medicinal plants greenhouse and lawn management as uh, some scientists work in labs on cellular research while other work outdoors creating inventories means collecting uh, data or record and uh, uh, conducting very large scale investigations Okay, uh, let's discuss about uh, some branches of botany. Uh, first one is uh, morphology, study of exterior of plants like form, shape of leaves, stem and roots, uh, taxonomy, identification and naming of plants, cytology is uh, study of cells, uh, their structure, function and life history, anatomy, uh, study of interior uh, structure of living plants, uh, physiology, study of the function of plant cells, tissue, etc. A study of plant fossils is called pleobotany. Uh, clonology is the study of pollen grains. Ethnobotany is the study of plants and human relationship. This include uh, use of food, clothing, medicine, dye, construction, cosmetic, and uh, many more. The term agronomy is derived from the two Greek words: agros meaning field and nomos meaning to manage. So uh, agronomy is the art and science of field crop production and management or it is a branch of agricultural science which deals with the principal practices of soil water and crop management uh, biotechnology using biological organism in industrial agriculture and other technological applications to produce useful products plant breeding <coughs> It is the production of plants by selective mating or hybridization. Selective breeding also called artificial selection is the process by which humans use plant breeding to selectively develop particular phenotypic traits. 
okay by choosing which uh, typical plants male and female will reproduce and have offspring together or it is the traditional mechanism for producing new varieties of plants for horticulture and agriculture development of better types of plants uh, breeding involves selecting and crossing uh, plants with desirable traits okay uh, such as a disease resistance The most important factor for plant breeding is the genetic variation in the desired characteristic. Okay, for example, one farmer who wants to select a plant with resistance to an insect pest will watch for the plants that survive an insect attack. Another farmer who wanted larger fruits will save seeds from plants yielding the biggest fruits in the field. The most important factor for basic selective breeding is to We'll start with a plenty of genetic variation and after selection of required character they then they multiply it for 391,000 species of plants are known <coughs> we see a huge variety of plants all around us among which some are terrestrial and some are aquatic plants despite this fact they all have the same parts and the same functions. They appear unique with different types of roots, stem, leaves, flower, fruit, seed, etc. And with different sizes ranging from microscopic to macroscopic. Okay. Therefore, the classification of plants is mainly based on several factors. Based on water requirement, based on habitat or environmental location, based on natural system of classification based on their habit habit of body appearance so let's discuss uh, this classification in detail classification on the basis of habit of environment locations as uh, some plants are terrestrial some are aerial and some are aquatic plants terrestrial plants live on land aerial plants are above ground and attached to the other plants while aquatic plants uh, live in water mesophytes are terrestrial plants which are neither adopted to particularly dry nor particularly wet environments examples are corn cucurbits and privet azeophytes are those plants that has adaptations to survive in an environment with little water such as desert popular example of azeophytes are uh, pineapple, cactus, uh, dragon fruit, etc. Hydrophytes are aquatic plants that are specially suited for living in aquatic environments. Okay, halophytes are soil tolerant plants that grow in soil or waters of high salinity. Plants are classified into gly glycophytes, and that is soil sensitive, and halophytes, that is soil loving plants. Now, the example of halophytes are semi desert plants, and mangroves, and swamp, etc. Classification of plants based on their life duration. There are three types of plants annual, biennial, and perennial. Annuals are plants which complete their life cycle within one season. Example rice, watermelon, maize, wheat, uh, sunflower, etc. Biennial live for two years first year is mainly limited to vegetative growth and second year is it the productive year plants like cabbage carrot ali complete their life cycle in two seasons and are called biennial perennial are plants that survive for a number of years okay example of perennials are mango coconut apple bougainvillea etc Classification of plants based on their habit of body appearance. Trees. Trees are big and tall plants. They have very thick, woody and hard stem called the trunk. They have only one main stem which bears leaves, flowers and fruit. The lifespan of the trees are several years. Banyan, mango, all are some example of trees. Shrubs are medium sized woody plant taller than hulls and shorter than a tree.
Their features include bushy, hard, and woody stem with many branches. Rose, jasmine, lemon are some of common shrubs around us. Herb. The herb is a short sized plant with soft green, delicate stem without a woody tissue. Okay, example tomato. Next type is climber. Climber have a very thin, long and weak stem, which cannot stand upright, okay? But they can use external support to grow vertically and carry their weight. These types of plant use special structure, which is called tendrils. Example include pea plant, many plant, jasmine, etc. Creepers, as name indicate, Plants that creep on the ground. They have very fragile, long, thin stem that can neither stand erect nor support all its weight. Okay, example include watermelon, strawberry, sweet potatoes, etc. And so let's discuss about the natural system of classification. As we all know that uh, uh, plants are broadly divided into two groups non-vascular plants and vascular plants in non-vascular plants we have uh, bryophytes and they grow in moist and uh, the example of uh, uh, bryophytes are mosses liverwort and onward on the other hand we have uh, vascular plants which are further divided into um, two main groups as seedless uh, vascular plants and seeded vascular plants. Uh, so, tetrophytes are the seedless vascular plants and they grow in damp shady places. Mm, they have well developed uh, uh, leaf root uh, but no flowerings and fruits. Uh, the seed plants. You know, are further divided into uh, two main groups angiosperm and gymnosperm. Angiosperm is further divided into uh, uh, two subgroups uh, that is uh, uh, dicotyledon and uh, mono monocotyledons. So monocots have only one seed leaf uh, while uh, dicots have uh, two seed leaves. And the example of dicots are uh, beans etc. while monocots have uh, wheat, onion, uh, rice, maize, etc. The other group of uh, seeded plants are uh, gymnosperms that are, uh, that are large trees uh, or uh, bushes uh, producing cones. Uh, seeds are present but they are not enclosing fields. How many plants species are there in the world there are about 391,000 species of vascular plants currently known to a botanist out of which 94% are flowering plants 980 include conifers 13 more than 13,000 include ferns and horsetail other include mosses uh, red and green algae, lichen, mushrooms, and brown algae. Autotrophs are organisms and that can produce their own food using materials from inorganic source. They are the producer in the food chain, such as uh, plants on land and algae in water. They produce complex organic compounds uh, such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins from simple substance present in its surroundings, generally using energy from light through process of photosynthesis or inorganic chemical reaction called chemosynthesis. So let's discuss chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis is the use of energy released by inorganic chemical reactions to produce food. Chemosynthesis is at the heart of deep sea communities, sustaining life in absolute darkness where sunlight does not penetrate. Okay. All chemosynthetic organisms use the energy released by chemical reaction to make 
a sugar, but different species use different pathway. For example, the most extensive ecosystem based on chemosynthesis lives under sea hot spring. At these hydrothermal winds, chemo autotrophic bacteria oxidize hydrogen sulfide, add carbon dioxide and oxygen, and produce sugar, sulfur, and water. Okay, and the cycle of energy is based on the flow of energy through different trophic levels, uh, means a feeding level in an ecosystem. A yellow arrow indicates sunlight, which shows that energy flow from a uh, sun to producer. Producers are uh, mini plants and other autotrophs. Green arrows shows that energy and material flow from producer to other organisms, uh, consumers and uh, decomposers. Gray arrow shows that a uh, material flow, material that is carbon dioxide, water and nutrients uh, flow from environment. While a red arrow shows that uh, material flow from consumer and decomposer back to producers. Plants are a fundamental part of life on earth. Humans and animals all depend on plants because uh, plants generate oxygen, provide food, fiber, fuel, shelter, lumber and timber, uh, prevent soil from erosion, provide medicines, uh, plant fill and important psychological needs that all allow humans and other life forms to exist. Hope students, uh, you understood the lecture. If you have any question, we will discuss it in our question answer session. Thank you.